Hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, in an impromptu setup to the max. I'm actually sat at my stepdad's step office, and I just had to download FIFA on the new PC. I had to get OBS, I had to get all the recording stuff. My microphone is literally just laying on the table. I don't even have a microphone stand, guys. This is all I'm doing for you, man. It's time for the holidays. I know a lot of you guys are at home due to, due to the Christmas holidays, and I hope you guys have an amazing time. I personally am having a great time. We went with my wife to Netherlands, and uh, right now we are here, sat in the office of my dad, um, to prepare ourselves for another great episode of The Road to Glory. So if you guys are excited about my dedication to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe subscribe in the um, down below below the video subscribe if you're new and of course turn on notifications most importantly now I'm gonna be editing the next few videos myself biscuit is having holiday with his family as well I would be appreciating it if you guys can put it into the comments down below that you wish biscuit a happy holiday as well that will probably make him very very happy but yeah we're back on the road to glory man and I'm really really excited about it because as you guys know this is my favorite series to record and it does incredibly well on the channel last episode Miyoshi was going crazy the man was insane he came in as a super sub and just ran through opponent's squads 99 acceleration 95 sprint speed Possibly one of the best super subs I've ever had. He just is insane. When he comes in as a super sub, my god, he just runs through people. Now, we have also signed this young man from Manchester United. Ethan has joined into the team. Uh, Laird or Laird, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'm just going to call him his first name, which is Ethan. So, uh, this man is in the team. Bezinga is in the squad. And um, also, Kamara is in the squad now that you guys have been commenting about quite a lot. A lot of people were commenting that I should change his appearance in terms of his um, shoes and untucking his shirt and giving the right color of shoe for the youngsters that came in in this season which is hopefully something that we can do in the upcoming episodes because obviously right now I am in the Netherlands and I don't have access to the cheat engine or the realism mod so we're actually playing regular career mode right now and I'm actually excited to see how it affects the team like I really want to see what this does to the team itself but overall man thank you for the insane support on this series. I really, really do appreciate it. We have changed our formation. We are doing incredibly well with our strikers in the name of, of course, Angol and Ferreira. Ferreira has stopped scoring for a little while, but he's back at it again. He now has 22 goals and 24 on Angol. Them two are going to be fighting for it. Alongside them, though, is Kavion from Cardiff City, who is having a good season as well. By the way, if the lighting in here isn't that great, I'm sorry, guys. Um, it's just that, obviously, as I said, it's an impromptu setup. It's not my usual setup, as you guys know. But yeah, we are back at least recording videos, and that's very important for us. Now, I am really excited about this episode because we're starting off with a massive match against Spurs and Begin wants to play. Begin has been really good lately. Haraslin and himself have been fighting for that starting lineup position. Haraslin has been okay. Begin though was very impressive in a couple of situations. His left foot is so good. He has such a good finish on him as well. We are hoping to see him go up to enough dribbling soon enough. He needs three more dribbling stats and then he will be a four star skiller as well, which is going to make him even more usable because sometimes I do find myself down the wing just trying to cut inside with a Berber spin and then nothing's happening so hopefully that's going to be something that we can fix in the future but for now it's all about the team it's all about that massive game against Spurs can the boys of Leighton Orient get a result against them now here's another comment by the way for which I will have to turn that way it says um sell uh, no set begin and cook's instructions to cut back inside and stay forward for more performance with them as they have the skills so that's something that we can definitely do I do not have anything against changing some of these instructions and you guys are saying cut inside and stay forward and we can try that because maybe that will get them involved a little bit more into the gameplay a lot of times we do see them down the wings not really getting as involved as they should so hopefully this time around things will be improving that way but we will be jumping into this game right now against Spurs 
I don't know what to expect out of this one. It's going to be a big matchup once we kick them out of the Carabao Cup. If you guys remember, this is the round of 32 in the FA Cup. So things will be very, very interesting very, very quickly. Let's get right into this. Still in January, still in the transfer window. Can still buy some more players, as you guys know. 5.7 million in the transfer budget. Let's get involved into this match. Oh, by the way, yeah, we're back to the old kits because, yeah. I don't have the um, mods over here on this new PC uh, that is from my stepdad. So we are going back to the original kits for a couple of episodes. Hope that's fine for you guys as well. As we get into this game, guys, don't you worry at all. I already changed the sliders to be the way that we had them in the past. So this is not going to be an easy matchup against Spurs. Obviously, without the realism mod, the gameplay should be a bit different. I don't know what to expect right here uh, because I haven't played regular FIFA against the regular AI in a long time. Hopefully, it's going to be a massive matchup between us and Tottenham. I do expect a big fight, but we have beaten them once with a worse team. Can we do it again this time around with a team that is definitely more competitive? Let's see. Oh, no. Early on. Tottenham! Bennett! Big save. Oh, no. I played it right into them. Bennett again! I'm sorry. I am so sorry. That is 100% my fault and no one else's. Bennett made two massive saves and I just passed it straight into my opponent. I don't know what I was thinking there, man. That is quite upsetting. I should have done much better in that position. I did not expect myself to do that bad early on into the game. Immediately Tottenham ahead of us. This is not looking good for me, man. Davis coming through the middle. On goal. Oh, yes. Ferreira. What am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I not passing it through? Another mistake in this game. I made two massive mistakes. I shouldn't have conceded by now. And I should have scored as well. What am I doing? They bring it through down to the right now. It's Aurier. Aurier drops it. It's a good cross. Wagner heads it away. And Oliveira and Lampru actually managed to get it away properly. Begin now on the counter. Begin with lots of space ahead of him. Begin is running through. Can he find Ferreira? Ferreira, right foot into the top left. Get in, boys. Whew. All right. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. I did not expect our team to start off that badly. But that is a quality finish into the top left. Begin gets himself an assist. An incredible, actually, incredible assist right there with his back heel. I was actually aiming for him to pass it like a hu normal, regular human being. But he decided to go for it. And Ferreira, for once, actually scores before on goal. Nice stuff. 1-1. One, one. We're back into the game. Tottenham, are you shaking in your boots already? Cook, great ball into Davis, Ferreira, Angol is through, Angol with his pace, Angol with the pass, oh my god, we're doing it, yes, get in, 2-1 <laughs> up against Tottenham, Jesus Ferreira, once again with the run, once again with the goal, it's a beautiful, beautiful team move from the O's, and you can see our fans celebrating in the faces of Tottenham fans, Talking about Tottenham fans, in the Tottenham against Chelsea game, apparently there was some racism on display once again um, against Rudiger. Man, I can't believe this stuff is still happening in 2019. It's actually ridiculous. I saw what Gary Neville said, and it, it was spot on. Gary Neville was saying the exact right words. I think players should just go off the pitch as well. When they experience racism, in my opinion, players should just leave the tea, uh, leave the pitch and a team with the fans that were abusive need to lose the game. 3-0, forfeit. That's how it should be in my opinion. Ferreira, 3-1. Get in, boys. Honestly, lads, I genuinely think that's how harsh it has to be in order for this racism stuff to actually stop happening on the pitches. Tottenham, you guys are a great club. You guys have an amazing team and an even better coach now. But genuinely, stuff like this needs to be put out anywhere on the pitch. Any football pitch in the world, the players should have the right to leave the pitch if stuff like this happens. And it can be proven that it happened because all of these stadiums have thousands of cameras. So uh, once they can prove stuff like that, in my opinion, it should be a point deduction even um, if necessary 
for the team that has those fans doing it. But then again, some people might actually disguise themselves as fans of other teams to then do some racist stuff to hurt them with point deductions. So then it gets to a point where it gets like really, really tough to decide what to do. But I think the players should have the right to leave the pitch when they do experience racist stuff on the pitch, for sure. That needs to be a power that the players have so that um, football fans don't actually just go ahead and ruin games like that. But man, we are dominating Tottenham right now. They were 1-0 ahead. And I'm just talking casually and beating them into, into the ground. It's, it's unbelievable to see. Oh, that's a good ball. Collins. Come on, Bennett. Yes, Bennett once again, man. He made such good saves. I bottled it personally. But Tottenham seemed to be suffering the same thing that happened the last time we played against them. But we were just a better team. Tottenham, I think we might your, we might be your kryptonite, you know? It might be the Carabao Cup last year and the FA Cup this year. Imagine being the coach of Tottenham and suffering those two defeats. Whew. Oh boy, you should get fired. But right now, Tottenham still have 45 minutes to come back into this game. I really hope they don't, but I'm going to try my best to maybe go ahead and score even more. Jesus Ferreira with a great performance so far. Oh, that's a good ball. Harry Winks. Harry Winks plays it back. Sissoko Winks. Bennett. Whoop. Bennett is the beast. I do have to say, though, the tip from Praxion with uh, changing the instructions on some of the youngsters down the wings actually really helped in this game. I can feel Begin play a bit more of a part in this game than I usually do see him play, especially that left wing position for me normally is a spot where not too much is coming from unless we are on like a counter attack and there's a clear pass to the left hand side. But right now, man, I do feel Begin playing a lot more and taking a lot more part in the game itself. So thank you for that tip, my man. As always, the comments are very, very helpful with every single thing that we do on this career mode. And for that reason, you guys are the best assistant coaches in the world, man. We lost it here, Harry Kane. Down the wings, they do have the space to cross it in now. Lampru chests it for whatever reason. Lampru chests it. It's 3 2, and exactly what I was scared of just happened. Tottenham might be back into this game. Lampru chests it instead of properly just kicking it away. I don't know why. It is um, who scored that one? Endombele with the goal. 65 minutes have passed, and I think we need some substitutes, boys. It's going to be. Haras lean down the right, Miyoshi coming in and making the changes hopefully, coming in for Oliveira because I'm going to go a little bit more offensive, but Rodri Tarin seems very tired, so the new transfer, the low knee, is going to be playing in that centre-back position. Ethan, good luck at the O's. He's now making his debut. Let's see what he can do. That young man is taking over a position of someone who was very good for our team. Um, so Rodri Tarin, for the first time, I actually subbed him off. And there he is. Let's see his movement for a sec. Oh, he does move all right. It's not the quickest, but it's okay. Tottenham push forward now down the wing. We're going to try and get to that with Collins, and we will. Collins, Miyoshi, Lampru, Davis. Davis, beautifully done. On goal now through. On goal has the finish shot trait. Let's see it. Lee on goal. Hits the post. Tottenham still... With a shot at this game, they do bring on Parrot, who I believe is a backup striker who lately has been getting some chances at Tottenham. So, quite interesting to see him play for them right now as well. Is that mine? That is mine. Nice. Well done. Haraslin. Haraslin with the run in behind. On goal with an incredible pass. Haraslin, left footed beast. That's it. That's it, boys. 89 minute. We're cutting it off. Haras Lean 4-2. The O's do it again against Tottenham. We are their kryptonite. Premier League teams, we are your kryptonite right now. And you just wait until we get into your league, man. That is a quality finish. Look at that strike from Haras Lean. Gets in behind and Angol gets a really good assist as well. Perfectly timed pass from Angol. Jesus Ferreira with three goals. Haras Lim with the fourth. And right there and then, the game is done and dusted, isn't it? Haras Lim, let's try it once, once again. Oh, this time he does save it. But man, oh man, am I happy with how my team has played here. I'm proud of this team that has improved 
by themselves from years to years we have become better and better and now it's going to be Tottenham beaten at their home ground against the likes of Collins. Unbelievable scenes. A team of youngsters, a team filled with players that no one really knows has pulled it off against the beloved Tottenham team right here. We dared, we dreamed and we got it done boys. Congratulations to the O's for beating Tottenham once again. We have done it. Unbelievable. Hey, Collins has grown in his stats, guys. He is becoming a better centre-back. We have been waiting for him to improve his interceptions. They were god-awful, actually. But uh, now he has gotten better. Leighton Orient, though, even though we have just beaten a Premier League side, you can see that we are struggling in the Championship. We are now five points away from Nottingham Forest, who are in that second position, just chilling. And we have Wigan Athletic coming up next. I believe Wigan was the team that we were fighting against last season for promotion. And they were the team that was chasing us down. Right now, you can see there's a big difference between us and Wigan. They are now only on 30 points and we are clearly the better team with 56, 26 points more than the other team that was trying to get promoted last year and did so, but they are struggling to keep themselves safe in the championship. Now, as we go into this game, again, I wanna mention that we do have 5.7 mil, maybe potentially up to 5 million with 30K in the wage budget. This is going to be an interesting matchup against Wigan, which we will be simming. I want to see how our team can do against the likes of Wigan. Can they perform? Yes or no? Also, I was asking about the situation with this young man. Should we play him ahead of Collins or Lampru? And I said myself that I don't want to play him because I do kind of believe in growing the youngsters that we have because he's only a low knee. We don't want to give him too much play time. We want to keep our own players happy. So for that reason, uh, Ethan is only going to be a substitute for now. But here we go against Wigan. I don't know what to expect in terms of a result. This is going to be a tough one. Oh, well, it is a 3-1 win. And I forgot, I don't have the realism mod on this PC. So, um, well, it is a quick simulation. Ferreira with a goal. And goal gets himself one. Cook even gets involved, which I really appreciate because Cook obviously is a big part of this series. And Davis is very happy with the amount of playtime he gets as I get a call. Well, it is transfer deadline day. And as you guys know, that is a very, very important day for us. I don't quite know what to do with the budget once again. A lot of people, again, were saying that I should be focusing on improving the reserves team because for the Premier League, it is not going to be a good enough reserves team. That is for sure. I do believe in you guys. But here's the deal. In this reserves team, man, we have so many players with great potential. Hopper even has up to 77 potential. If I'm not wrong, he has improved over the years himself. Kamara has really, really good potential, but he is obviously very low rated. A lot of these players, it's tough to kind of replace them because it sucks getting rid of these players that are going to be great players in the future. But one of the ones that a lot of guys were saying in the comments down below was actually the fact that Harrison in this team needs to be replaced because he's not ready yet. He's only 16 years old and I do kind of agree that Harrison might not be there at the moment. So the question is, who can we find for a decent amount of money that we can bring into the team? 5 million is what we have right now. And due to the realism mod not being applied on this PC, we might actually be able to buy someone quite decent. So let's see what we can do with the amount of money that we have. Oh, lads, I'm seeing something here. This is Joseph Willock from Arsenal. Currently, his contract is running out in six months. I don't know how much he's worth, but I am interested. He doesn't have a release clause. He's a center mid. Obviously, a big, big talent from Arsenal. A lot of Arsenal fans love this kid, and Unai Emery is about to let him go. They haven't extended his contract, which is a big mistake. But we're going to be offering them a nice offer of 4 million. I don't know if they are happy with that, but we'll see what happens. I don't know if I can offer more after this offer. They want 6.4, so we can negotiate with them, which is good. So let's counter this a little bit. We're going to offer them, how about 5 mil? How about 5 mil? Can we make this happen? This would be a sick transfer, you know. Submitting the offer, 5 million, 4%. 5.2 million, 
14% sell-on clause. How about 5 million, yeah? And we give you a 20% sell-on clause, Arsenal. Let's make it happen. Come on, Arsenal. Unai, don't disappoint. 5.1 mil plus a sell-on clause of 19%. 31k in wages. I can get him right now. Ah, oh, do I do it? I do it. I do it. I do it. Willock is joining into the team, guys. This might be a massive signing. We would have never been able to afford this guy if his contract wasn't running out. The question is, will he accept the wages that we can offer him? Because he's obviously an Arsenal player. He's earning quite a bit. So it's going to be tough to sign him on transfer deadline day here. But man... I would be very happy with bringing in a massive English talent into our team. So for that reason, I'm actually quite excited about this one. He's going to be an important first team player. Is he okay with that? No, he wants to be a crucial first team player, which means that Oliveira <coughs> might have to drop out the starting lineup. I'm not, not even kidding there. Willock wants to be a crucial first team player. Four year contract. That's okay with me. Now, don't ask for too much on wages, please. He's asking for 32k with massive bonuses. Oh, boys. This is looking bad. This is all I can offer, man. This is literally everything I can offer for you, Willock. Here it goes. Does he accept? He doesn't. Lads, it's looking bad. It's looking really, really bad. We have to take away the signing bonus. And we have to hope, we just have to hope and dream that he might somehow accept. To, what do I offer him? Can he get 30K? 30K in wages. 30K in wages. Four year contract. Willock is not going to accept that. It's not going to work out. I'm going to do it one more time. Either he accepts or we are done here. We, are, we might be done with Willock. It was a nice little dream to dream about, but... Man, it's not looking like it will happen, will it? Submitting the offer one last time. Willick is not accepting again. Wow, he's still negotiating with me, though. It seems like he really wants to join this team. Man, I just needed a few more K. Just a few more K and I would have been able to sign an Arsenal talent. But, no. I've never seen a negotiation that lasted as long as this one. Genuinely, never ever have I had the opportunity to offer a contract six times. Come on now. He needs time to consider the offer. So Willock hasn't actually joined yet. And it's a bad time to consider because we do have the transfer deadline day. I need him to make a decision. Right now it's looking bad. It's looking bad. He would be a sick player, though. I would love to sign him into the club. Now, we're going to move forward in the transfer deadline day and hopefully get a message. Pogba has returned to Juventus, it says. And Willock has accepted. Now, boys, I need to check one thing. Do I need to extend contracts this year? Do I need to extend anyone con anyone's contracts? No, not Widowson, not this one. Both of them... Um, this one is on loan. This one needs to go. We've been waiting for him to go for quite some time now. Bennett and all the lads can wait next next year. We do have a little bit of... Yeah, we do have a lot of happiness in the team. We don't have too many unhappy people. We have Lewis, who is a bit unhappy, but it's his playtime. We have Haraslin, who is also unhappy with his playtime. Watson is okay. He's out on loan. Do I go for Willock? Do I spend my money on him? Man, I wish you guys could respond to me right now. I wish I could just do a poll right now where you guys can tell me what to do. A four-year contract for such a big talent is massive, man. You know what? I believe in my team making it far in the FA Cup. That's the way I'm going to bring in money into the club. Joseph Willick from Arsenal, one of their biggest talents in real life, is joining the O's. Welcome to the team and he is 76 rated. Oh yes. And of course, this time it does say we signed a top tier player. And you know what? Oliveira 
you don't fit into this team you go into the reserves team and the main team now should be on fire and yes i am changing it around i am not going with the defensive players i don't know what it is but when i play defensive i concede more when i play attacking i score more let's look at the stats of this man three star three star six foot tall three star um the 81 pace high attacking work rate 80 acceleration 82 sprint speed 83 stamina okay composure for a midfielder i guess aggression is okay strength is okay ball control and dribbling is really good finishing is on a 72 long passing is great short passing is great shot power not the best but lads we have just signed a top tier premier league talent you see where the o's are going do you see this vision actually coming true to make this team the best team in england we have once again improved the starting lineup Oliveira, you had your chance in the main team and sadly ever since he had joined in we struggled we had to change formation in order to be successful again but now we are going all out offensive boys we are not caring too much about our defense we're gonna let Lampru, collins tari and wagner handle with the defensive duties and the rest of the team will focus on attacking and with that being said i think this is a quality episode. We do have a few more hours to sell a couple of players. So it might happen. But if it doesn't, it's not really a worry of mine. I'm actually quite happy with the way things have turned out to be in this transfer deadline day. I did not expect it to happen, but it did happen. And it makes me very happy. As you can see in the right-hand side, Willock holding up his shirt with the number 16. Let me know in the comments down below what number he should have in our squad. But man, some of the Arsenal fans will be very happy. Some of you guys will be unhappy that I spent all of my budget on this guy. But we have long staff coming in next season, which is going to bolster up our midfield once again. We can take a look at this real quick as we go down here. Longstaff is going to come in into the midfield as well. So Longstaff, Willock, Davis. That is potentially an amazing midfield three where we play with a 4-3-3 type of formation. And then you have fourth behind them replacing Collins, which is going to make our team even better in the future as well. So I am extremely excited about the future. And we do not get any offers for any of the other players in our team. And with that being said, the transfer deadline day is done we have spent every single penny that we have in the team for these players which yeah might not be a smart thing to do but i really wanted them in the team and i need to make sure that we go through into the next round of the fa cup because if we don't lads yeah it's looking a bit tough we might actually get the fa cup money right now and we do does that get added to the budget right now upcoming season oh no hold on oh no I thought it was being added this season. I genuinely thought it was being added this season. Have I just made a massive mistake? <sighs> Guys, I will have to do my absolute best to keep this team happy. I need to keep Young and Haraslin very happy. Otherwise, they might force a move away from the team. And that could be costly. That could cost me my job. I'm not even kidding. Because the board could be coming in asking for them to uh, play more or uh, get new wages. And I don't have the money to offer it to them. Oh, I messed up. I messed up, didn't I? I really did. I really, really did. Oh, God. I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm going to end the episode right there. Thank you for watching. I think I messed up, but I also don't think I have because it's going to improve our team big time. But man, what am I doing? <laughs> Lads, you can scold me in the comments down below. Begin now in the same rating as Haraslin. He has improved. Um, Cook, I believe, was he a 75 or an 80? I don't know, but he, he looks like he has improved to a 75. Davis at a 79, Tarin at a 79. Both of them are the highest rated players in our team. Davis has caught up to Tarin. Wagner gone up to a 76. Lampru up to a 72. And then on the bench, Ethan has gone up to a 75. And Begin, as I said, went up to a 76. So good growth in the team, as you can see. Um, Griffiths has gone up to a 67. And Harrison up to a 64. Oliveira stuck at a 73 at the moment. But boy, oh boy. I don't know what I'm doing, 
but I'm doing it and I have zero money left to keep the team fit and happy. This is going to be quite the battle, boys. Um, I have to play young and Harasleen as much as I can now. So uh, Bennett might get a little bit of playtime off. But thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a crazy episode with a win against Tottenham and a big money move where we spent every single penny on one player. <laughs> Take care. Peace.